Marijuana and cancer treatment in our pets. Should you be using it, not using it? What are the risks? Does it really work? Get the facts in this video. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe. Click down there to sign up for notifications. And lastly, when you click the link further in the box below, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies. Currently, there's a huge interest in using medical marijuana, in particular for cancer in our dogs and cats. In part, this comes with the, some of the types of cancers that are very difficult to treat. Um, many of the cancers our animals get, you know, such as lymphosarcoma in our dogs, are not curative by chemotherapy. So we're sort of left with, you know, what are some of the alternative options? Likely, you've heard of all these potential benefits, and likely you have a pile of questions and rightly so. So you're sort of left with like, do I use it? Do I not use it? Is it safe to use in my dogs and cats? Potentially could it harm them or can it really benefit them? And I'm hoping just to set the record straight, ease your mind and maybe give you a little bit of guidance. So if little Thule here were to have cancer, there's a few alternative things I would consider using. And at the very sort of top of the list would be med medical marijuana. Medical marijuana has been used for thousands of years for an array of different human and animal health problems. According to the National Cancer Institute, the cannabis plant may have anti-cancer effects by one, induction of cell death, two, inhibiting cell growth, three, preventing cancer or tumor angiogenesis, that's new blood vessel growth, and three, preventing or inhibiting tumor metastases, where it's spreading to distant places throughout the body. One interesting fact that was reported on is that the cannabinoids, the components of the cannabis plant, appear to be protective of normal cells where, well, at the same time damaging and you know, causing cell death to the cancerous cells. In this specific study, the cannabinoids induced apoptosis or cell death in these glioma cells that were cancerous, but, and this was a study done in rats, but at the same time um, completely unharming the normal glioma cells, and these are part of the nervous system cells. Another two-year study where they actually used THC um, fed to mice and rats over this extended two-year period of time showed a specific and dose-related preventive effect um, for a type of liver cancer, along with a decrease in some of the precancerous things or even benign cancers such as adenomas, polyps, um, which might show on uh, different parts of the organs throughout the body. There are documented beneficial effects for certain types of lung cancer in people, for breast cancer, also for colon cancer. There are also documented anti-inflammatory benefits and in the report they go on to talk about certain types of cancers such as colon cancer which you know, are linked to chronic inflammation going on in the colon. So if you can decrease that inflammation, decrease the likelihood of that cancer starting in the first place. They even report how CBD may enhance the uptake of cytotoxic drugs. So they're talking about using chemotherapy. Obviously, these studies are referencing people, and how you know some of the can the cytotoxic drug was in the cancerous cells. There was an increased amount of that cytotoxic or chemotherapy drug, making it more effective. So they're talking about even using it in combination, where you're not just using one or the other, using both of them as well. So in general, from all my research, I'm seeing that it appears that the part of the cannabis plant that is going to be most beneficial would be the THC, 
secondly, the CBD, and then some of the other ingredients within the, the plant itself. So ideally, if you're gonna be treating your dog or cat, you're gonna be using a whole plant extract. So this is a real good example of one that I can, would consider using if it's my own dog and he's and little Tula's got cancer. Um, it's four to one, so it's 75% CBD, 25% THC. So in general, if we're looking at the cancers, we wanna have you know, at least a portion, minimum 10% of that, preferably the solution to have THC. Seems to be the tinctures are the ones that seem to be most effective, the ones that seem to be most beneficial and easiest to give to our dogs and cats. So if I were to dose little Thule here, I have, this thing is 300 milligrams of CBD and it's 75 milligrams of THC, I would be using the measured dose of one, one milligram of CBD per 10 pounds of body weight, so she would get two milligrams of CBD. So it means one mil, and I'll show you it, one mil, which is one full dropper full. I think you guys can see the dropper full there. So that's one mil, that contains 10 milligrams of CBD. We're looking at a CBD dose of one milligram per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Tula weighs 20, 20 pounds, she would be getting two milligrams. So that would take you to, so there. That would be 0.1 mil, so 0.2 mils total a day. So that would be her dose right there. Will it help your dog or your cat if he or she has cancer? Um, I don't know, it really depends on the type of cancer. If this is a, is a cancer that may or may not be responsive to CBD, THC, the other cannabinoids, along with you know the stage of the cancer, how fast it's spread, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's lots of different variables. But is there is there the potential for it to help? Yes, there is. And secondly, is it fairly safe? You bet. Are there very few interactions with other drugs? You bet too. Um, the one big point I need to add in is once I really encourage it. There should be some THC in it, minimum 10%. Two, you want to start at a relatively low dose, which I'm talking about. So one milligram, based on the CBD content, one milligram of CBD per 10 pounds of body weight, that given in total daily. You're not going to see an instant result. I would expect it to take about two weeks and be doing it that measure dose. But within that period of time, if there's going to be a positive benefit, that's what you would see. You may see that your dog or cat has a bit more energy. You may see that their appetite is increased. Thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I'll put a link to some of those studies, the references to that paper in the box below. And secondly, if you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. And third, if you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to sign up for my newsletter. And you can do that by clicking the link further in the box below.